Hey everyone! So sometimes you don't control the actual HTML markup that you're trying to test. In this example, I have dev extreme widgets that actually make up this form. Each input is not a simple text input. It's an input wrapped in a bunch of divs. How do you, for example, select a different state by clicking on this button and interacting with this dialog and then checking that the right state is selected? I already downloaded this example from the web and I will open Cypress and I'm just visiting a page. You can see the same example right here. Let me move it to the side and let me show the code. So we're visiting the index.html and now we want to start by confirming that California is selected by default. Let's open the dev tools and find this input. And right away you see that dev extreme creates all sorts of extra fields just to render this particular rich widget on the page. But you notice that there is an input that's hidden. That's where the dev extreme widget will actually set the value. So when you submit the form, the value is correct. And right now it's value it's California, which is correct. Let's confirm it. Now notice that we don't control the widgets and we have all this extra markup, but most widget libraries put pretty good area role labels and names. So let's select this input by its name attribute get name attribute equals state and let's assert that it has value california by default perfect now notice that cypress warns me that the element is invisible but it does have expected value now i want to find this button and click on it to make sure that this pop-up appears okay what's that button well, I see a div with roll button and it's not directly under the input with name state, but it shares the same ancestor. So here's how I would select it. I would use aria label select by taking the input that we found, going to its parent element and then finding aria label select attribute. Now, do we find the right button? Yes, we do. And let's click on it. Okay, well, pop-up shows up. So we found the right button and we clicked. And usually pops up, pop-ups like this, they are created inside the body, but separately from the main markup and they're positioned using absolute positioning so that they appear next to the element they work with. Okay, so this pop-up has class, has role list box. I say, why don't we find the list box? So we'll say, sci get role list box and say it should be visible. And once we found this list box, we probably want to find an option with, let's say, my state of Massachusetts. So we'll say find role option. But we don't want to say just selector, we want to say contains and selector and the text Massachusetts. So get queries the elements from the start of a page, find queries the elements from the previous element, like we found right here, contains, if it's a child command attached to a previous element, just finds element by part of a text or by part of a text and selector. Okay, let's see how this works. Okay, well, it found it. Uh, we probably want to scroll it into the view because it's a list that has overflow, right? And once we've sc scrolled into a view, we probably want to click on it. Well, let's run it again so we can see what happened. Perfect, we can see Massachusetts was selected and the list box should go away after we click. 
And what else can we check? Well, the hidden input for our state now should have Massachusetts value. Okay. Now notice that my assertion should not exist is incorrect. The pop-up is still there, it's just hidden. Okay. Should not be visible is the right assertion. Perfect. So the pop-up goes away and the input has a new value that we selected from this dropdown. So this is how you would work with elements if you don't control the markup. You find role, name attributes, and you query elements using those attributes.